Hey folks, welcome to another Luthier's Lair episode. This is the first episode in a brand new series detailing uh, a, one prototype base, at least, maybe two. Uh, you might have seen my uh, latest announcement exclusively to Facebook actually, The Facey. I'll be putting it up on YouTube later, uh, announcing that I'm going to be venturing into uh, short scale bases. The reason for this is that I've been asked many times to make short scale bases and I haven't made any short scale bases ever before. But since I have the uh, my CNC router now, uh, it's pretty straightforward for, for me to go and model up a short scale base, uh, considering that you know I've made files that are parametric and you can adjust them to any scale or size you want. So that's um, what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to venture into short scale and very short scale bases. So I have actually made some components uh, for the first project I'm going to tackle, which is a 25.5 inch scale, probably piccolo base, but you could probably get strings to tune it to the normal tuning. But uh, let's go and have a look at the components I've made. I will describe them. I'll describe the wood I'm using for prototyping, which is not, you know, top-notch wood, because I want to have a proof of concept without spending large amounts of cash on something that might not work. So let's see what we've got. Okay, let's take a look. Hey, so. Having milled all these parts out, and uh, if you watch my other videos on how to make certain things using CNC, uh, you'll know that um, it takes a little while, but nowhere near as long as it does by hand. Now, as I said, I'm going to hand carve this because I still haven't figured out the loft, this compound angle loft for modelling in the neck. But like I say, it's going to take about maybe three hours or something to carve that out by hand. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Why is there a piece of blue tape on here? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, this is getting ready to be glued. Uh, I'm going to be gluing the fretboard to the, to the neck pretty soon. As you can see, this does not have a, a nut slot because I'm going with the... Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the nut I am going with. It's a nice uh, high ledge brass nut. Gorgeous. You usually find this style of nut on bases with this uh, kind of headstock and stuff. So I'm just going with tradition right now with this. Uh, lovely nut right there. And we've got all this set up now. All that <coughs> remains for me to do is look out a bunch of clamps and then I'm going to use a tight bond ultra and on, I'll grab some of that for you so you can see it I usually use tight bond ultra on necks there it is there tight bond ultimate I should say ultra whatever it, it's it's got a U in it right so Make sure this is kind of burnished down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag some glue on here. Make sure everything's covered. Oh, I have to, I forgot one bit I need to tape off. I can do this roughly. And it's this piece here on the fret where the nut is going to go. I don't want glue on that. That's fine. And that can stay on there actually. And it gives me a better line from where the pencil line is. So that'll get smeared on there. I'll sprinkle a few grains of salt, actually, on uh, on the neck when the glue is on there, and that'll stop the the fretboard from slippy sliding around with the glue, and end up enable me to clamp it. And I'll let it tack up very slightly as well. Um, this has a nice long working time, maybe about 10-15 minutes working time. So we're fine there. So let's get on and let's glue the neck 
glued the fret fretboard to the neck. Obviously, when I smear the glue on, I don't keep the tape on there um, like that. I don't do that. I'll take the tape off. It's just so that glue doesn't get in the uh, truss rod cavity. You know, you don't want to glue your truss rod in there. Or it's going to affect both the eff effectivity of the truss rod and also uh, if it's glued there and you adjust it, it's going to crack the wood. So just be careful with that. Okay, let's go and get this glued back soon. Okay, <coughs> the uh, fretboard is now glued and clamped onto the neck. Now, as you can see, there's squeeze out there. That's, that's normal. You might be tempted to get a rag or something and wipe that off. Don't do it. Don't do it. Unless you uh, intend to paint the neck, then that's okay. Um, <coughs> the reason for that is that if you wipe that <coughs> with the, even a dry cloth or a damp cloth or whatever, what you're doing is you're pushing the glue into the wood, pushing it into the grain, and then if you want to stain it or something later, the stain won't absorb into where you've pushed the glue into the wood. That's bad, of course, because you'll get blotches all over the place. The best thing to do is you let this set up for, well, this is a tight bond ultimate, so I only need to have this clamped for maybe two or three hours. I, I like to keep it clamped for a little longer. But after maybe three hours or so, you can unclamp this and then you can take a razor blade to that and just cut off all the squeeze out and you're still left with fresh wood underneath. It'll just sit on top of that wood. And then you can just scrape it off. Obviously it's going to get sanded into final dimension anyway. It's very close to final dimension doesn't need much sanding because it was done on the uh, on the uh, CNC router so it was uh, a case of me programming the tool path in there so that I left a little bit of stock just leftover stock that allows me to sand this into its final configuration so that's it I'm gonna leave that three hours maybe four hours and then we'll we'll shave off the squeeze out and then we'll leave it overnight to set up properly and that'll be ready to carve tomorrow brilliant okay three hours has passed now since I clamped this uh, fretboard to the neck um, I can uh, shave off some of the squeeze out on this side and I'm gonna wait another hour take the clamps off and do the other side um, I know it's three hours because it takes three hours to machine one of these. That's a Falcon Series 2 Deluxe body. It took me two hours and 48 minutes this morning to machine out. Saves my old hands. So, razor blade or better still, uh, you know, a Stanley blade like this or a DeWalt blade or whatever brand you like they're all the same very sharp edge make sure it's brand new and just do that take off the majority it will take it all off and by the way don't sand this off again it will push it into the wood so all you're doing is just taking the surface of this off and smoothing it out you know don't gouge into the wood just skim it across the top and all that stuff will come off you see that's all coming off now okay next step we'll unclamp it and we'll do the other side or you can scrape like this takes like you're planing the wood but hand planing don't even need to use a, a proper planer just draw it across the wood very lightly and you'll get most of that stuff off it's like a cabinet scraper really you know 
take most of that crap off and you can see the woods nice and preserved underneath we haven't pushed any glue into it so we can stain it or do anything we like with it now it doesn't limit our finish if we had taken a, a wet cloth to it when the glue was kind of wet and tried to rub it away with a wet cloth that we'd have pushed it into the wood and now all you can do is paint it a solid colour to try and cover that up because the wood would not be able to absorb any stain or any dye or anything like that the glue would get in the way okay that's it let's go and unclamp it in about an hour awesome okay then here we are unclamped and there's not much squeeze out because I have been scraping get my old uh, blade here and just I'm only going to cross it very lightly, very lightly. The shavings will come off, they will come off. Okay. Now when it's down to a reasonable level then you can get a piece of maybe 220 grit. Start sanding, probably better with a block. Usually a pencil eraser. Tear off a little piece of sandpaper that on there and start doing this and then sooner or later you're just going to see a line in there and that's the join that you will see try not to sand too much down near the heel here because uh, that's still got to fit the uh, neck pocket so try not to do that Again, over here, yes, we need to scrape here. Scrape. Very lightly as well. Don't, don't be hammering into this. so that you get rid of the surface glue then the rest can be sanded and make sure you don't go over your frets that you so meticulously um, engineered on the CNC there just make sure it's nice and easy and then again see that now that piece that was on there it's gone away ok Dead easy, nice and light, fast motion, nice and light, very light. Don't press, be patient, and you'll end up with something nice, you know, like so. I don't know what that is, it's that big sweat mark or something, I don't know, whatever. And there you go, it's all coming out as well. Good, the cloth is actually tagging on bits of glue that I missed. That's a good technique. Never thought of that one before. But there you go. And that's how you do it. Okay. On to the next, right? Cool. Okay folks. Uh, as you can see I unclamped the neck assembly with the fretboard now glued on obviously scraped off the, the squeeze out and then set it on my little jig which is nothing more than a vise with a very straight piece of oak in it and I set about hand carving with the Shinto uh, carving tool As a, again it's got a fine side and a rough side it's like a lattice work of bandsaw blades which reminds me I have to order more bandsaws a uh, rat tail rasp here for rough work and a it's a file come up rasp for wood very thick coarse side and quite a fine side there and I was able to get this contour in 
that sweeps along with the body by hand gives you actually a little better understanding of uh, what needs to be modelled on that. Uh, the, the, the volute and the, uh, the heel of the neck, I mean the, the headstock of the neck done, nicely rounded off there, pretty rough still. But this, uh, you know, this is to get an idea of how everything's going to fit together on this prototype. So let's unclamp it, shall we, and uh, make some room for it. Let's unclamp it and see what happened. Yeah, right. Oh, put that one tight. Um, let's stick these in here. Sorry about that. And of course, it's a thin beam so that I can work either side and to protect the headstock of blocks in there holding it up and to protect other parts, I just taped it off. I'm not going to go really go near that stuff, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And there you go. Next, perhaps a little bit thick still. I don't think it's that bad actually. It should be about 21 millimeters uh, here. Um, didn't measure it. Twenty two point three. I can take a bit more off that. I'm actually going to leave it right now. If I need to take more off, I will do uh, after I've assembled it to see how it actually comes together. You know. Uh, of course. I'll weaken the neck slightly by taking a little bit more material off it, but that's 20, 22, and here should be about 24, and it is exactly 24, that's good. So everything roughly in dimension, I uh, probably will take a bit more off of that, but I'm going to leave it right like that right now, and we will start, um, actually start assembling this, uh, and see if it kind of works out. So, let's go for it. Brilliant. Yayas. Yeah, so, what we got here? Okay, so I just fitted the neck. It's been sanded to like 150. The body is pine. It's not a good body. It really isn't. But it's a prototype. And this is feasibility study right now. So, what I have here is a, a, a bridge with 19mm string spacing. A standard bridge, as you can see, the uh, I put like two wires uh, through the nut here, which I fitted, and just with a tack of cyano, I can tap that out if I need to. There's no back to it, so that helps. You know, when you tap it, it's not going to break the fretboard. That's why I made this without uh, a nut slot in the neck, in the uh, fretboard. Anyway, so I've got this, these wires here, I think it's like 24 gauge wire, that I usually use for uh, sizing up uh, string spacing on initial uh, assembly. And this is the initial assembly, it's bolting the neck to the body. Does it fit? Yes. It did fit, but what I had to do was this dimension was a bit too big so I shaved off about a tenth of an inch from the neck pocket made a note of that and uh, I also measured the thickness of the fretboard and the thickness of the piece of wood I used for the neck they were slightly oversized so in reality I'm not going to need to do that but I have noted it for future reference the carve here is really nice I'm going to need to scallop the back out though because, uh, you know, as you would expect, you can't really get up to the high frets on the E string here because there's a big chunk of wood in the way. But there you go. As you can see, it's not tuned yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what I'm noticing with a regular bridge for a regular bass guitar even though this is has adjustable saddles, this bridge, 
this is a hip shot uh, bridge uh, I see that the strings are a bit too close to the edge of the fretboard for my liking I don't like that I like them in about an eighth of an inch I don't know how much that is actually I think I'll look and I know they're not the real string thicknesses and stuff but uh, this is a very good ballpark to get so if I come up here and do that I'm going oh wow yeah it's just it's very hard to measure yeah it's about a tenth of an inch not an eighth on that side and on this side should be the same yeah about a tenth of an inch I like it to be about an eighth so that when you're playing hard the string doesn't go bloop, 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 off the edge of the fretboard it wouldn't do that with a flat radius of course but I do have a slight radius on this fretboard that's 16 inches radius so left with a dilemma I need to get a bridge that I has I would go with like uh, 18 millimeter maybe string spacing or maybe a bit less or I can buy individual bridge saddles you know the ones you usually get them on uh, like a uh, fan shaped uh, multi-scale instruments um, and that would in definitely increase the appeal of the guitar it would also increase the cost the guitar because that's extra work for me to do to get these bang on but I think that's probably the best idea I really do at this point at this juncture straight up, level that up actually let's make sure that's parallel yeah and actually let's just quickly check the uh, now I've got this bridge in the right place from the front of the nut to there, 25.5. Go back a little bit. That's roughly there. 25.5, I'm looking at. Yeah, there you go. That's slightly improved that, but not by much. Not by much. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking at. Um, uh, getting a a bridge that will actually suit this ultra short scale bass and uh, it shouldn't be a problem I mean, if I can't get one I'll just buy individual uh, saddles which are readily available I'll get the cheaper ones because this is a prototype and we'll, we'll fire them at the place and uh, see what we come up with now for this, I know that I can offset that slightly, and where that string lands there, then I know where to put the, uh, the thing in the jigger the ball. Yeah. Thing in the jigger the ball? Yeah. The uh, screw holes. That's what it would be like. It's looking very good. I'm, I'm really quite impressed. I think the, this was the bit I was worried about the most. But there's solutions to it, so, you know. And how do you like my uh, string anchor there? It's awesome, isn't it? So, um, yeah. Onwards and upwards. I think it's a good, a very good first test fit. I did put the uh, truss rod uh, adjustment cavity in there. Uh, hand routed that. So I didn't draw that in. I wasn't sure just how it was all come together. And of course, you know, I, I, I took this the neck pocket down a little bit by about a tenth of an inch, so this would all match up. So I've got a nice play here and thrust on just about. Anyway, 
onwards and upwards. Are you new? Okay folks, that'll do for part one of this series. Part two will uh, entail uh, getting the neck finished and doing some test fitting and uh, you know other little bits and pieces to the body and let's see how this design works out. I'm fairly confident that uh, I'm going to get something that will work out of this prototype and if I do then I can go into sort of production mode and maybe sell some. Mm, awesome. But as usual until then stay safe, be good and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching folks. Cheers. Bye bye.